friends. This week I went to restring my uke and realized that I had inadvertently been sent a low G set instead of high, but I put them on anyway and I thought since I have them on this week, we could do a little lesson in one of my favorite styles of guitar playing, Piedmont Blues, and how we can adapt that to ukulele. Many of you are probably familiar with Delta Blues. We have people such as Sunhouse and Charlie Patton that played in that realm. But alongside that, there was also a blues movement in the fingerstyle world in the early 20th century in the Piedmont region of America, from Virginia down to about Georgia or so, and not heading out west to Mississippi where we have the Delta players. And really the difference between these two styles, although they're both early blues fingerstyle types of playing, is that in the country blues or Piedmont blues, we have a steady alternating bass line, which really gives a nod back to the previous ragtime era of playing on piano or stride piano as we think about it. The difference between alternating between a bass note and then a chord like this. And guitar players were adapting that to this instrument by using a fingerstyle technique. What the basis of this is, is really an alternating thumb pattern. And it enables us to play two separate parts, a bass line as well as a melody part, together. So let's break this down and see how it all works. I arranged a bit of Mississippi John Hurt's tune, Lewis Collins or Angels Laid Her Away. It's a very simple song, quarterly, for us to get around. Usually this would be played out of a C position on guitar, but it works really well out of F on uke. So the first thing that we need to address is just the harmony or the chords themselves. We start out on the dominant chords. So we have a C major chord for two measures or eight beats, and then we go to F for two measures. We stay on this for an additional two measures. And then we go to the four chord, a B flat for two measures. And then we have a quick one, five, one. So we go F for one measure, C for one measure, and we stay on F. So this is a basic 12 bar pattern that you have probably played in the past before or something very similar to it. The first thing we need to do is start the foundation, which is the alternating thumb pattern. In this context, we're going to play the thumb only on the G and C strings. Usually we would go back and forth between the root and fifth of the chord, but that's not always possible on uke because we have a limited range, but we want to stay with chord tones. So what you can practice first is just the alternating bass pattern over top of the chords that we just played. So to do this, we will play on beat one and beat three, we're going to play the G string. And on beats two and beat four, we're going to play the C string. And this note will change depending what chord we're voicing, but this entire song, we're always going to alternate back and forth G, C, G, C. So if we put this down with the chords, the alternating bass pattern will sound a little bit something like this, starting on a C major. Then we go to F. We stay on F. And we go to B flat. We go to F, C, and back to F. Now this probably seems simple in isolation, but it's going to be mighty tough once we put the syncopated melodic line over top of this. You want to practice this independently with the chord changes. Get very familiar with it. You want this to be like riding a bike before you try to throw in a highly syncopated line over top. One other thing to note is that although the thumb does always alternate in this style of music, sometimes it's not individual notes. From time to time on beats two and three, when we uh, two and four, when we generally hit the C string of the uke, we can actually follow through, hit the E string as well to give a little bit of a chordal accompaniment. And the tabs are not written like this, but you can feel free to just know that this is not a very exact style where we have to play everything as is on the page. So you might hear something like this, just giving a little bit more harmony. And that's okay too. So that's one thing that you can try while you're getting started in this style. But take a week or so and really get accustomed to just playing this thumb pattern before we try to add anything else over top. Once you're used to playing the bass line, then it's time to address the melodic line that goes over top. And I've isolated this so that we don't have to worry about the thumb for a moment and we can get used to the syncopated or offbeat rhythm that we are playing in the melody before throwing this all together. We're starting out on a C major chord. 
And we're just going to play really the melody itself, so we're leaving that accompaniment out currently. So we're going to play for two and a half beats. One, two, three. So what are we doing? We're going from the third fret, the C on our A string, and on the end of three, we're gonna count one and two and three and, and we're gonna slide on up to the fifth fret and then immediately come down on beat one, back to the C on the third fret of our A string as a half note, and then the B flat on the first fret of our A string, giving us a C seventh chord now on the second part. So here's our little rhythm for just the first two measures of the song. So it'll be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. And then we resolve this down to an open A for two and a half beats. One, two, three, and. And on the end of three, we're going to hit the F on our E string on the first fret. And then we're gonna resolve on beat one of the next measure back to our C on the third fret of our A string. So here are those next two measures, and remember this is over top of an F major chord. So it'll be one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. So here's our first four measures together, just the melody. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. In the next measure, when we stay on the F, we're going to repeat the line that we just did. We're going to play an A and then down to an F on the first fret of our E string and right back up to the C on the third fret. Rhythmically identical, but then as we play the C, we're not going to hold it out for the whole measure. We're gonna walk down on beats three and four with an open A and then the G on the third fret of our E string. So here are those next two measures. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. And then we're to our B flat major chord. And we're going to have rhythmically very close to what we just did. We're, we're very much coming in on the off beats, especially the end of three very frequently in this song. So on beat one, we play the F on the first fret of our E string. And then the end of three, we're gonna hit that F again, but immediately hammer on to the G on the third fret and right back to the F on beat one. And then again, on the end of three, we're going to hit that G again. So here's our next two measures, just to get it in your head. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And then we go back, we have this same F major lick, and you'll see when we put the thumb pattern in, how these two really play off of each other. And then we go to a C major, we're going to play a G on the third fret of our E string again. Immediately up to an open A, back to the G, and resolve it to the F. And you can see these last two measures. We have rhythmically what we've been doing this entire time. We really need to get used to feeling that anticipation of the end of three for where this goes in. So now let's look at putting all of this together. So now that we have the two different parts of this, it's time to put it all together, which is really the tough part. Independently, the melody and harmony aren't that hard in this tune, but because they don't always rhythmically line up, it's a bit tough for us to process at first. So make sure that A, the melody is very much in your ear and you can sing it while you're playing. Then we can properly place the rhythm and make sure that the thumb is very consistent going throughout and just practice that as the chords with just the thumb until you're quite used to it. So what I'm going to do is play this entire song very slowly for you so that you can see how all of this lines up together. One, two, three, four. This might seem a little tough at first, but once you're used to having that alternating thumb going, you'll find that you have the facility to really throw any melodic pattern that you want over top of this. This is a great style that we can use, not just for blues songs, but also for early jazz songs or ragtime songs. So it's a great little finger style technique to have in your repertoire. I'll see y'all next week.